in ServiceNow platform, different data sources can write directly to CMDB. We can have ServiceNow Discovery directly writing to CMDB. We can have Service Watch directly writing to CMDB, or we can have Import Set directly writing to CMDB. But different data sources directly updating the CMDB can lead to duplicate data as well as non authoritative data sources overwriting the data. In order to solve these issues, we introduce an API layer that sits between the data sources and the CMDB. Different data sources call in this API to write to CMDB. The API layer performs identification and reconciliation where identification defines the process of uniquely identifying the CI and it relies on identification rules. The identification itself helps address the data duplication issue. The other process involved is the reconciliation of data sources. Reconciliation defines the process of reconciling CI attributes by allowing only authoritative data sources to write to CMDB and it relies on reconciliation rule. Here reconciliation is helpful in addressing the non-authoritative data source overwriting the data issue and thus both the two issues should be solved based on this API layer that we have discussed earlier. The identification process relies on identification rule that can be one of two types. An independent rule, a rule that identifies a CI independently of other CIs or identification rule can be a dependent rule wherein a rule in which identifying a CI requires identifying a dependent CI first. This video covers independent CI identification including topics field-based matching that defines the criterion attribute for identifying a CI. It also includes matching with reclassification which indicates when a CI needs to be reclassified and also covers detecting duplicates which explains what happens when duplicate CIs are found. So let's start with the demo. First of all, type in CI identifiers. and go to the hardware rule so this is hardware identification rule that is out of box and for the demo purposes we have modified or tweaked the rule a little bit as you can see this specific rule is applies to hardware CI and also we can see a flag which is independent flag that uh, says that this specific rule is an independent identification rule. Also as part of the identification rule you will see a bunch of identification entries as you can see here uh, with different priority levels from 100 all the way to 800. So during the identification process, the highest priority identification uh, rule gets evaluated first. In this case, it is 100. And in that case, uh, the criterion attribute serial number and serial number type will get uh, evaluated as part of the first identification process. If you are able to, f if the identification engine is able to find the, uh, the matching CI, then we are good and we have a matching CI. If it's not able to find based on this specific uh, identifier entry, then we move on to the second highest priority rule, which in this case is 200. And then the process continues to look at the other set of criterion attribute defined by, by that identifier entry. Uh, in this case, it is IP address and MAC address. So for our demo, uh, for this video, we will be mostly relying on the second uh, identifier entry rule, which is basically based on the IP address and MAC address. So let's move on to Linux server. Uh, this is the demo Linux server that I'm trying to uh, use as part of my identification process. Here you can see that uh, it has a IP address, a specific IP address and a specific MAC address. So what we will do is we will run a sample script. Let me open that. 
so this sample script is going to call our create or update ci api that we have defined the first step is to for this to call this api is to define your payload in this case we have defined a payload wherein we specify the class name which is uh, a linux server ci and we also provide a list of attributes that are uh, that are there for the ci for which we are trying to do the identification and then we simply use that payload as part of the input to create or update ci and we input it as part of the api itself now um, one additional thing we need to know is like the create or update ci api also needs one additional input which is the data source that is trying to uh, inject the data in cmdb and in this case in in our example we are using service now which is trying to insert data to cmdb so the api internally knows like what is the data source that is trying to insert the data and what is the payload that is going to be used so now when we run the script what happens is when we run the script is it returns you a output payload that says that what operation happened in this case the operation was an update operation with other information about so more detailed information you can get uh, as part of the output payload in the documentation but here for just for the demo purposes i'm just explaining the operation is update here so it means that it was able to find a matching record and it did update so in this case the the demo linux server ci was updated and the ram field that uh, was old uh, in this case is 1024 should get updated after the identification uh, api got called so in this case the api has found the matching ci and it has properly updated the ram field so this demonstrate how the identification engine has matched the ci and it has properly updated the ci based on the identification rule for ip address and mac address now let's move on to the second demo which is looking at the hardware ci let me show you here so for this demo i have another uh, hardware CI that we are going to use in this case uh, the hardware CI is HD520 and it again has some IP address and MAC address and notice that for uh, for this demo uh, the class for this CI is uh, hardware so this uh, this CI is at a hardware level and uh, now let's again use a sample script for for this demo okay now for this uh, second demo you will notice that we are trying to do a identification with the based on the ip address and mac address in this case this payload has ip address and mac address that matches the hardware ip address and mac address but an interesting thing to note here is that the ci itself is sitting at hardware levels that the ci is of type hardware but the data that we are trying to inject uh, for the payload is saying that i want the class name to be linux server ci so identification engine is intelligent enough to say that oh i have found a matching ci which even though it's sitting at the hardware layer since it's a matching ci and uh, we have a property wherein uh, we allow to automatically upgrade the ci in case there's a matching so in this case it allows automatic upgrade of the ci for this hardware ci and it will upgrade uh, the ci to the linux server ci so if, when i run this uh, script what should happen is it should simply upgrade the the ci so you will see that as part of the when the script ran it was able to do the update operation and here you can easily see that the operation was update with upgrade so here if we go back here you will see when i refresh this ci the ci got upgraded from 
hardware all the way to Linux server, which is what we requested. So this example demonstrate how identification engine internally will do matching as well as if reclassification of CI type is needed, it will do accordingly. Now let's look into a third example that I wanted to show here is let's look into this uh, list of a Linux server CIs with which we are trying to do matching and notice that here IP address and MAC address are same for both the two CIs. So in this example we want to demonstrate how the identification engine is handling duplicates. So let's again run a sample script. Now this sample script is is, uh, is very similar to the previous sample scripts and uh, the data here is, uh, is saying that uh, the IP address and the MAC address is same as the IP address and MAC address of the two duplicate CIs that we have here. So what should happen as part of the identification process is like when it tries to do the identification it will encounter duplicate CIs and the way the identification engine is configured when it encounters duplicate CIs it will simply log in duplicate error messages both as the output uh, here as well as in the output payload it will mention that it has detected duplicate so and it should not update the any of the duplicate CIs so you will see that here the output payload is mentioning that it has encountered multiple duplicate records. So what happened is like uh, uh, since it detected duplicates, it simply um, errors out duplicate uh, multiple duplicate records and it has not uh, updated the CI. So these three examples that I've shown today demonstrate of how identification engine is handling uh, the scenarios of uh, field-based uh, uh, matching uh, second example was uh, reclassification of CIs when it tries to find a matching as well as how the identification handles duplicates. For more information please consult our product documentation or knowledge base or ask a question in the service now community.